otherwise it will say that backup failed hi everyone in this video i will show you how to create a simple backup script backing up your data is a really important step to ensure the security and reliability of the systems that's why it's a very common script that is used by the system administrators operations engineers devops and other it people let me switch to root user and here i'm gonna create a simple file so let's say touch opt local shell scripts and here i will create backup script.sh file and also let's make this file executable so i'm gonna use change mode then give execute permission and to our script so opt local shell script backup so guys it seems here we just missed the c letter but that's okay it's just a name so backup script now it should have execute permission let's open this file and start writing our script so vim i'm gonna use vim editor of course first thing we have to write the interpreter so it will be shebang and then pin bash and now we can start writing the code so the foundation of any good script lies in the variables we will start setting up the variables so let me just drop a comment here let's say defining variables the first variable will be backup source and i'm gonna set it to tmp directory this is the directory or the file that you want to back up so in my case it will be tmp directory and then of course we should have the destination directory as well so i'm gonna say backup destination so in my case it will be backups folder i'm gonna create this folder later and then we are going to make each backup unique by using the special date format so let's define a variable i'm gonna call it backup date and this variable will store the current date and time in the format of year months day hours minute seconds so i will use the common substitution here i'm gonna use dollar sign and then parentheses so this command substitution actually allows me to execute the command and capture its output so what command we are going to execute it will be date command right here inside the parentheses so date command and also let's give the format what format we are going to use we are going to first put the percentage sign and then year then months then we should have day it should be a small letter then we should have hour then minute then second and let me just put here space okay i think that's it now it is time to create a meaningful backup file name using the backup variable i mean using the backup date variable so i'm gonna just define a variable here it will be backup let's say uh, file name so it will start with backup then underscore then we have to use our variable which is backup date so we're going to use this variable so to use the variable we have to put this dollar sign and after that just provide the variable name so it will be backup date and after that we can just give tar that gzip so this is just usual extension for compressed and archived files this backup file name variable will hold the name of our backup file which includes date and the time information okay so we have defined all our variables to keep things organized we are going to create a backup directory inside our backup destination so here i'm going to use make directory command then provide the p option so first it will start with backup destination directory so i'm going to use backup dst variable and after that we're going to say backup date 
This command also ensures that a directory, which is this file, is created if it doesn't already exist. By the way, if you don't feel comfortable working with Linux commands, you can check my course where I will teach you everything about Linux. Check the link in the description and get your discount. Okay, we can move to the next step. This is where magic happens. We're gonna use the tar command with some flags to compress and archive the contents of the TMP directory into a single backup file. So let's just put a comment here. Let's say archive and not end, but let's say just archive the source directory. And now let's use our command. We're gonna use tar command. Then we're gonna provide czf option. So C is for the new archive, as it specifies the compression type, which is jzip here. And F indicates that the following argument is the name of the archive file. So this argument, so I'm gonna use quotes. We're gonna start with backup destination. And then we're gonna give backup date. And finally, you can give backup file name. And also you have to specify the source. So what directory you're gonna backup. So it will be backup source in our case, but it's a variable. We should use this dollar sign from backup source. So that's all actually. We have just completed the script, but maybe as a last step, you can add a block of code, which verifies the backup was created successfully. You know, it is just for information purposes. So let me just quickly do that. So I'm gonna put a comment here. Let's say verify the backup was created successfully. Let's say it will be meaningful. And I'm gonna use if statement here. So I'm gonna say if uh, dollar sign question mark. So it means that it will check the exit code of this command, previous command, which is this one, tar. And if the exit code is zero, equals to zero, then we are gonna say uh, echo backup was successful. And you can also give the file name maybe, we can just say backup file name. And if it's not successful, otherwise it will say that backup failed. I think that's enough. So if the exit stops of the tar command is zero, then backup was successful, otherwise backup failed. You can also add alerts, like when backup failed, it will send you the email or message, etc. But this is not a topic for this video, maybe we can do that in another video as well. Anyway, let's test the script. So I'm just gonna save the file, and I will run this script, so opt local shell scripts backup script.sh let's run this one okay it seems that we have some error in the end of file syntax error and it is line number 37 let's check it let me say set number it will show you the number so it says we have some errors in line 37 uh, but actually, let me just remove all these spaces. I mean, all these empty lines. And I think I already saw the error. Actually, error was we just missed the fee. Because if you are using if statement, and when closing the if statement, you have to use this fee. Let's save the file one more time. Uh, let's run it. Okay, it says backup failed, the line 18, the command not found, let's see what's wrong there, line 18, uh, yeah, I see that uh, there should be space actually, so I'm gonna put space here, and here as well, let's save the file. Let's run it one more time. Okay, it says backup is successful and the file should be created. Let's check it, lsl backups. But before actually this directory was not created, but
but you know, right now it's created and we have actually we have two files here but we should have one let's check if there is something under the, this directory in backups there is nothing but actually our file should be created under this directory not under backups like this probably something wrong with our scripts let me check it very quickly so let's use vim what creates this tar file the tar command so there should be problem with tar command maybe okay backup destination backup date backup file name okay i think we just added another underscore here but it should be without it because we have backup date but we don't have an underscore after date so let's just remove it uh, let's save the file and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna first remove everything under backups let me use rm rf so it is removed we don't have anything i believe Yes, we don't have anything there, and I'm gonna run the script one more time. Okay, it is successful, and then let's check the backups. Yes, we have this directory, and under this directory, we should have the tar file. So we tested our script, and it is successful. Now you can also add the script to a cron job to run, let's say, for every day at midnight. Let's do that. I'm gonna use cron tab that um, dash e. I will say zero zero and then zero zero. So it means midnight and every day of the month, every month and every week. So let's just save. Not save actually. We have to, of course, put the script. So I'm gonna say opt local shell scripts and under that we have backup script.sh and let's save it installing new cron tab let's do cron tab dash l we have cron tab here but let me check the directory actually i think it's wrong maybe let me copy it Yes, we have this script, so everything is okay. But if you remember, when we run the script, we have some errors. I mean, let me just run it one more time. I will show you. So we have this error flight. We just need to ignore these errors, but we can also send all the error output to devnal in the Chrome job as well. So let us edit Chrome job one more time. So let's say send all errors to dev null this is how you send all the errors to null anyway let's save the file let's check the cron tab yes we have this cron job i will run the script one more time just to see if the directories are created there it has nothing to do with cron job but i'm just gonna see the files actually so lsl backups yes we have three backups right now so feel free to customize this script for your own needs and do not forget to test it before using it in a production environment all right i think that's it if you find this video helpful give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more